real quick, guys, run to Spotify to listen to this very unique episode and rate this podcast five out of five stars. Spotify is the only app that you can rate this podcast on currently and also is the best place to listen to podcasts. All right, Spotify, let's go. Love you, Chicago. We're not against rap. We're not against rappers. But we are against those. Something big about to happen. I hear the beat tapping. We some fly rum and felines rapping on the track. Better yet, grab a gat, cause we hot like. Enzo, doors closed, windows up, cause that's the way we like to ride. Windy City hitting. Check mic 1212. We live, baby. It's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda. You never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price. Priceline. Hey, what's up, Chicago? This is your girl, Miss Hip Hop, aka Queen Star, the hostess with the mostest. And welcome back to Speak Your Mind Radio here in Chicago. Yeah. Today is Sunday, July 24th, and it's a dope and special day because I got my actual real life brother on air, and we're going to be talking about like the new Jordan Peele movie nope but first you know how we get down before we start let's do a, the traditional icebreaker question okay uh Chase what's yeah. <laughs> what's heavier than a polar bear just heavier than a polar bear <laughs> Yeah, what's heavier than a polar bear? Yeah. Um, I'd have to say, uh, a pickup truck. <laughs> <laughs> you said a pickup truck. That was a good one. I was actually, the real answer is, uh, icebreaker. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I know it's goofy. <laughs> um, Okay, so I guess we'll go ahead and get this show on the road. (laughs) Okay. All right. So Jordan Peele, you guys, is an American actor, comedian, producer, and a filmmaker who is better known for his film award winning, I mean, award winning film in 2018, um, Get Out, and television work in comedy. Now, his breakout role is important to say his breakout role was in 2003 when he was hired as a cast member of the funny 90s sketch comedy series mad tv you remember watching mad tv um chase um i don't think i personally watched it but i did hear about it okay he also was um he left that gig at mad tv and in 2008, he collaborated more with his TV castmate, Keegan Michael. And so Key and Jordan created their own Comedy Central sketch project called Key and Peel. And Jordan Peel also did the revival of the 1959 anthology series, The Twilight Zone, from 2019 to, to uh, 2020. Which brings me to the topic of the day. The 2022 quirky uh, alien invasion film, Nope, that has a spin that's not your typical sci-fi horror thriller. But first, um, you guys, let's talk about some of the main characters like Emerald Haywood, whose character was played by the phenomenal Kiki Palmer and her brother, OJ Haywood, played by Daniel Kulu. And... He starred in the role of Chris in the film Get Out. So he had he had a reoccurring sequel um, with Jordan Peele, which is really cool. 
Now, Chase, let's talk about these two characters. Um, yeah, they are our main, uh, what are they, um, protagonists, I think. Is that the word? Anti- I don't even remember. Protagonist <laughs> or antagonist, but they are our two main characters. I think they were playing really well for, um, for their roles in the movie itself. And I think they were cast very well. What do you think? I think they were cast very well, too. Um, it was a, quite a shock to me to find out Kiki Palmer was um, one of the stars of the movie because she's such a great actress. But this in this movie, she really was explosive. Um, she kind of reminded me of the hit, um, the 90s hit TV show Moesha, you know, just kind of being out there and being bubbly and herself. And here's one factor that I didn't know about Kiki Palmer's role. She was playing a queer woman. Isn't that cool? Oh, yeah, that is interesting. Yeah, it was very interesting. And I like the OJ character uh, played by Daniel Kula is because he kind of reminded me of you. He reminded me of my brother, y'all. Like, he's just really nonchalant, kind of like laid back and, you know what I'm saying? It's cool. And that's kind of like how his brother, I mean, her, how her brother was acting, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They did, they did have a nice dynamic. They played off each other really well. I totally agree with you, for sure. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> let's keep talking. Um, Let's discuss some of the other characters, like uh, Ricky Parker, played by Stephen Yeen. Now, Stephen Yeen, he used to play Glenn on the TV series Walking Dead, and he was also inside the movie. He was the child actor of the reality TV show Gordy um, House, the chimp. Right. Mm-hmm. That was that was something. What was something? That um, that whole uh, scene with the with the chimp. That was something else. Yeah, it was the start of the movie. You guys are going to see it. We're not giving away too many spoilers. As a matter of fact, we going to keep that on the hush we're just talking about the movie but yeah the opening scene was actually crazy and it was very like it felt real because that that's where the horror came in for me the sound effects you know yeah I don't know if you had noticed but uh in the very beginning when that scene happened when the first studio or the last studio logo was uh rolling uh the audio was playing in the background and then it went to those flickering lights, which was really anonymous, really kind of spooky. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. It was very eerie for sure. Yeah, it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the the uh the character Angel. Um, Angel was basically uh played by Brandon Perry's, and he played the tech wizard like he knew all about technology and things of that nature it was really cool yeah. and Brandon Paris is an American actor best known for his performance as Alfonso Sosa on the um, original Angel OA and this is his first breakthrough role uh, as Angel Torres in the movie Nope so what did you think about uh, his character per se Chase? Uh, I think his character was really interesting um, you know, I think he really played off the rest of the movie and kind of just brought a completely different vibe when he was on screen. Hmm. Yeah, that sounds good because that's kind of feeling I had too. You yeah. just expressed it differently. That was cool. Yeah. Um. So like, okay, <laughs> tell me, what did you think about this stupid chimp? <laughs> like, what did it have to do with anything in the movie? Like, I don't, you know, what was your perspective on the chimp? Because I know everybody's asking that question. Well, as as far as I could see, and uh, I didn't completely come up with this by myself because I didn't understand it either at first. But uh, apparently the chimp is supposed to represent the alien in some kind of way. Which, which, which made a little bit more sense than just having that, um, that sequence for no reason. But uh you know, I didn't, it didn't really come all the way full circle for me. Yeah, I agree. There was a lot of uh, movie critics that said the same thing, that the film itself was indigestible because there were so many um, ins and outs and twists of the mind that it's like, 
it didn't just stay close to one plot because it was like, for me, I picked up like <laughs> two different, you know, avenues of the movie. And that was between the main characters itself and the, the, the back, the backstory of the branch and their grandfather being the legacy of that ranch. And they're trying to protect the legacy. That was one side of the story. The other side of the story was the actual UFO. No, it wasn't a UFO. It was a, um, what do you call it? It was all one creature. Yeah. Yeah. It was like one creature. Yeah. We'll just say that. And then also, you know, other stuff that took place in the movie too. It's just going, it's mind boggling to think about. It's like, if this movie wasn't trying to be a movie, I think in some way, if they could find more filler and like add a few extra characters, it would almost be like a show the way like nothing tied in the way you wanted it to. And like, this was like, you know, the ending, like the finale of the first season. And then it would all come together in the second season. But since it's a movie and it can't go on forever, you know, can't really tie it all in. You just have to understand it in the, in the time that you're there. Yeah. Yeah. That's, hey, that's, that's true and everything. Cause like I said, a lot of movie credits ranting and raving over the movie and saying how, um, Jordan Peele is a contemporary voice of cinematography and I definitely agree you have to follow along and like you I understand the movie I was just as confused walking out but I still I was still happy that I watched it because I was able to pull from some sources online to kind of gather everything together in my mind right. and that's why it's so interesting that I believe that people should go see this movie definitely Mm -hmm. I think it means something different for everyone yes yes so true so true um now one thing I would like to point out is the fact that okay because I told you everybody's going around like what's going on with this monkey this champ or whatever not understanding it now one thing I want to say about that is under the production company which is owned by Jordan Peele it's called Monkey Paw Productions yeah Yeah, so that's a little hint, that's a little clue for my detectives out there who want to do their research before watching a movie, which I wouldn't suggest, I will suggest watching it first and then coming up with your own questions and answering them. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I think think in a few days, there's just going to be a pile of Redditors who saw this, who listened to this podcast, and they're just going to go around doing their thing, like (laughs) just solving mysteries that aren't even there. Oh, I like that. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. The listeners, my listeners are so smart, very smart. So yeah. Um, speaking of being smart and everything like that, uh, Chase, what kind of um music are you into lately? Um, you know what? It's really weird. I went on this rabbit hole the other day of listening to old classical uh Japanese records. Wow. They've been like converted to MP3 formats. I don't know why, but it's just really uh, soothing. Really nice music. It's peaceful? Yeah, it is. Mm. You may have to uh, email me some of those links so I can feel the tranquility. Yeah. With you. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Um, do you like typically listen to what I like to call underground artists? Like, you know, people that aren't very well known yet. Um, you know what? I just can't seem to find them in time, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, like, uh, up and coming artists, I do find really interesting. Okay. Up and coming artists. Yeah. I like name some artists that you really like. I don't know. Like, um, I listen see like a couple months ago I started listening to this uh this uh artist Freddie Dread, which he became popular mostly through TikTok but um looking past that just the people who listen to the same three songs from him on repeat he's actually really good okay Freddie Dreads I might have to look him up you say he's on TikTok I got that yeah yeah that's cool that's cool okay. yeah like, you actually might have heard one of his songs without even knowing it, because just the beginning is a completely different vibe from the rest of his art. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm definitely have to, like I said, check that out. Freddie Dredd's on TikTok. For yeah, sure. look, look him up on Spotify, Freddie Dredd. 
uh, D-R-E-B-D. Uh, listen to the song, I think it's called Opal or something like that. You've probably heard that in the background of a TikTok at some point. Freddie. That's, oh, I see it, right? All right yeah. away, it came up. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. So now, which song are you talking about? All Alone or uh, I Got a Conductor? It's called, it's called Opal. Opal. Look, I'm really in my phone. <laughs> <laughs> like, aren't you supposed to be doing the show? Like, yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, well, how about this? I'll listen to it once I get off. Yeah. Yeah, that's the best thing to do right now. Okay, so let me ask you, um, have you heard, do you listen to Cardi B or Lil Durk or anything like that? Um, what do you mean by anything like that? Like, do I listen to hip hop music? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You listen yeah, to hip hop like, music. Yeah, like all the time, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, do you listen to Tyler, the creator? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah he's very cool. Yeah, definitely. Um, what about Jaden Smith's music? His music is phenomenal. Yeah, it is. Definitely. Mm-hmm. For yeah. sure. I enjoy it. Yeah. And I also like the awesome things that he's doing in California with the homeless people. He has like his own restaurant, this vegan based, like plant based just for the homeless people. And I think that's beautiful. Yeah, I did hear about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Oh yeah. So did you ever get a chance to check out um Drake's new album? Honestly, never mind. Uh I listened to the first few songs and I can say it's I don't know why it's getting so much hate. It's actually really good. Dang. Now, now, okay, you say you don't know why it's getting so much hate, but it's really good. What makes it so really good? I just, you know, I just like the vibe of the whole thing. Me too. Just the whole thing. It was just all good. Yeah. Yeah, it was good vibes. Yeah. Probably my favorite song on there at this point is uh, Falling Back. That's really good. Oh, okay. I like that song too. Yeah. Yeah. I like Jimmy cooking with uh 21 Savage. Uh, I haven't heard that one yet. Yeah. That one's a really yeah. great one. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, I also um, want to thank you for coming on today's show. You know what I'm saying? It's very hard to get in touch with you, you know, as far <laughs> as, you know, coming together to do a show. So yeah. I want to thank you for that. Yeah. Mm hmm. Is there any questions that you want to ask your sister? Um, yeah, actually, one question. What did you think, just overall, of the movie? Like, if you had to give it a rating out of 10. Mm. <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest or whatever. Like, a rating from 1 to 10 stars, I had to give it, just coming out the movie theater, like a 5 or a six, five to six. And the reason why I said a five to six, because five is average, six being a little bit more than average, is because I actually went to see the movie that I wanted to go see. Right. Right, which makes it average because I didn't fully understand what was being directed to me. I yeah. didn't fully understand it. Now, afterwards, I did my research. The, the, the movie most definitely gives a 10 because the lesson behind the movie, which is my audience, like I said, y'all are smart. You know what I'm saying? Go research. You come back to me and tell me what that lesson was. Um, I really feel like I could say it because a lot of people maybe should know this. So I'll say this much. Um, overall, overall, it's about being the token person in Hollywood. The token person, you know how they say, oh, that's the token black person, blah, 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 whatever. It's true. Like, they are the ones that get the most hate. They're the ones that get kicked around a lot. And then you have the Asian people that get violated just walking on the street, discriminated just walking on the street. Um, That depicted uh, Stephen Yeen's character and um, Kiki Palmer's character, where she played a queer woman they get overlooked too. They get mad hate too. And then of course, black people. Now I say black people because it stood out in the beginning saying OJ, his name, OJ, you automatically think about who, when I say OJ. Yeah. OJ Simpson. That's 
whenever I hear OJ, even someone talking about orange juice, that's the first thing that pops in my mind. Exactly. And that's Jordan Peele style. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's part of the lesson of all of this. So that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to give too much away, but yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I had to give it a rating, like you said, walking out the theater, I gave it like a three when I left and I'm going to tell you why, because it took a lot of brain power for me to even realize what the movie was about, (laughs) let alone to realize that whole lesson, the overlapping thing, you know, that took a lot of work for me. And, you know, that's not something I'm used to with, uh, you know, big movies nowadays because they all talk down to you. And it was, it was really refreshing to see a movie for once actually be smart without saying, oh, look how smart I am. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. stood out to me in that way. I like that because it's basically saying something without saying it. <laughs> right. Cold. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is my true real brother, Chase. And uh, thank you again for coming on the show. Yeah. It's just been nice. Thanks for having me. For sure. You're yeah. welcome. All right. Uh, peace out, and I'll call you later. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.